if this worked. And here we go. We uh, Dun, check. Dun, yeah, dun. talk a little bit and see if we got a connection here from the. Uh, Grimmier hey there, caller. hi there, ho there, everybody. Are you listening? Can you hear us? Hey, 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 hey. I think. Um, hold on a minute. Uh, oh, goodness. Mm, didn't, I don't know if I stopped the what you call it. I don't think I did. Well, you might want to check because it's not. No, it says broadcasting is. live on all streams. So let's okay. go for well, it. Okay, well, just a minute. Let me, let me do that and see if it'll say. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, That's, now, yes, you're live. Well, now. Indecision is my enemy. Uh, anyway, this is Flash, and... This is Grammy. And we're at In a Perfect World tonight on the uh, ninth day of June in 2020. And Grimner just gave us the we're live, but we figured it out. It's just very confusing to do. I know, it's ridiculous, but it's still... I watch other people panic in the beginning of their videos, too. Because it's just unnerving for some reason to do it this way. So, Miss Mary, would you care to introduce the uh, bots and the bodies to each other so they know who they're talking to tonight? The mm-hmm. bots and the bodies? Mm-hmm. Well, right up top, we got Barman, who is, I know I say it all the time, but he is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Get up here, rascal. <laughs> rascal. Three animals around me, and Rascal is the one trying to get up on my lap. But I'm thinking Bubba's thinking oh. she gets up there, I get there too. No, yeah. no, no. Is Mary loud enough? I don't know. Am I? Should I be? In any case, right behind Barman is Beetle. Beetle, how you doing, Beetle? Where's Pippi? Just asking for a friend. I also see Cowboy Tech is here. Hey, Cowboy. Hope you're here in pleasant voices. Grimner is here. Grimmy! How you doing, Grimmy? He is the RLM god, don't you know? We also got the lovely Miss Moose Goyle here. Hey, Moosey, how you doing? And Miss Kate, who is keeping track of something, but I'm not sure what. Apparently, I got lost in translation somewhere. Or I just plain wasn't paying patient. I do that a lot, too. I also see Anti is here, as well as the Asmodeus Asmo. We got some Chalsa Denis in the chitty chat, as well as Psychalo. Nah, she's upstairs. She's upstairs? Yeah, Yeah, it's probably kind of late over in your neck of the woods. Yeah, well, she's got to go to work tomorrow, too, in the city. One of her two days of the week she has to go in. Ah, I also see the lovely Miss Dayam Van Meter is in here, Mm -hmm. as well as Echelon. Flash, somebody is logged into the chat. Uh, I got you, and Flash. Oh, I got, got video. you. I know. That Jewy bastard. Yeah. <laughs> I'll flash you right in my head. Uh, Flasher, got, got, Flasher. Got, 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 got. We also got a frumpy work or a frumpy mm. work. No vowels allowed because Vanna White not been paid. Hey, remember when we I did that? We also got a frumpy. No mm. vowel hour on the chat. <laughs> A no vowel hour? Oh, that Back would up. be an interesting I, chat. I did it? that at Real Liberty. Oh, not real. I did that at uh, World Truth. Years yes, ago. Yeah. Yeah. Try yeah. try that sometimes, spelling for a few minutes without using vowels. It's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird. It would be really interesting if we used no consonants. And just vowel. Hey. Then, we then we'd be going, I uh, Yeah, we would uh, sound, uh, hey, we'd uh, sound like, uh, like Joe Biden giving a speech. There you go, pretty wow. much. What yeah. if, something to look forward to. It'd be a trip. I'm here, kind of, mm-hmm. sort of, maybe. Mm-hmm. Java, 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 Dr. Two Java, is also Dr. logged into the chat Ooh. as well as J. Dredd. Hey, Hansel. Hansel? We have us a Hansel. Hansel? Somebody's got to run. Yeah. You know, Somebody's got to run the it oven. Like that, yeah. It makes me think of, oh, poor Elmer Fudd. He's not allowed to carry his rifle anymore, <laughs> and they're taking Yosemite Sam guns away from him too. What the hell? Life. Why do you yeah. even have him? In? Next thing you know, they're going to take uh, Marvin the Martian space modulator away oh, from no. him as well. Not How the Illyrium thirty P thirty six modulator. It's disgusting, I tell you. We also got a Meister Brower in here, as well as Prince, the one in print, not the purple one. 
We also have a Rob Woiks here. Hey, hey Rob, bubble. did you fire up the bubbler and I just plain wasn't paying attention? You know, maybe I just ain't got enough to pay for Oh, you got That's enough. Dirty. You're just tighter. Uh, you you're, you're I'm tighter than a frog's ass and that's watertight. Mm. <laughs> I also see trust no one is in the chat as well as Vanna White, the lovely letter turner of the channel. We got W four D K V here mm. and Weather Dork. Mm. The Phantom is here. Uh -oh, I will kill you if you stick me with the needle. Well, mm. Beetle, I will not stick you with the needle. Uh, I will not do it. I know uh, I do not like needles hey, unless I'm sewing. According to Salt Lake City Mike, there's worse things to be stuck with than a needle. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> you had to be there. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. We also got a Chloe in the chat, as well as a Cyborgian Noodle, who is touching everybody with the Cyborgian noodliness of it all. And mm. those little entrails that you're feeling, yeah, that's just Cyborg Noodle saying, I love you. I also see E-Man is here, as well as and Siv. Gromit is in the chat. And looky there, we got a JJ's. No, 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 JJ's in the chat. Hey, dude, how's your kilt? Hope it's staying down. It's freaking blustery out here. God dang it. They're saying be very careful. Do not drive if you don't have to. And do not stand under trees because these winds could knock them down. I'm thinking we've had four days of wind already. Now it's coming from the other direction. That could possibly happen. I also see kisses in the chat as well as Matt, WJ2002. Mr. Snick Snack Patty Whack, give that dog a bone up here. Got some pop 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 blonde sauce and chocolate. SLC Mike is here and Matas has the holiest lover ever. Ami 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 and to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Zeep picks. Dun dun dun. Thank you, Miss Mary, for introducing the crew. As you all know, the end of the world, which was scheduled for July 15th, has been temporarily postponed due to the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, because people just ain't getting that whole social distancing thing. What is, no, nah, beside all that, what is wrong with me? I feel like I'm on a planet filled with, you're not going to like this term, Bozos. Yes, Bozo? I said it. You heard me say it. A world filled with bozos. I'm looking at one of them right now on the computer screen in front of me. Wow. Yep. Want to know what his name is? What's his name? <laughs> Boris. <laughs> Boris. Yeah. You know, Boris John can't be a bozo because Bo Boris don't have the hair for it. Oh, this guy's Love got the hell. hair for it. No, this this guy's a bozo in training, always has been. I don't know wow. how he's – I don't have no idea how anybody could have actually voted for him to be um, in a position of control in that country, but – Boris. Well, it was either <sighs> Boris or Natasha, and I'm sorry, but Natasha is too, just entirely too anorexic for most people. Yeah, well, you know, I lived in uh, England, and uh, my mother was uh, from the England, so there's a few things about the England that I was told about that other people don't seem to catch on to. Ah. And one of that? those details, little Miss Mary, is that the Queen of England has all the power. All of it. Not just some of it. She's not just a picture on a fucking coin. That woman can take the prime minister out with a stroke of a pen and put anybody she wants into his place at any time. So, why would you believe that anybody votes if she has that power? The guy in the chair is the one she wants there. So, so is the queen a queen? No, the queen's a German, too, on top of it all. This whole thing's a fraud. Well, yeah, every area, every area of life that we know as a collective, where you learn it from television or school or some shit like that, all turns out to be shit in the end every time. Just like the coronavirus. Mm. Yep. Mm. But the corona did its uh -oh. job. You know what it did? What? It destroyed, um, so far they're counting 27 cities, major cities. 
They're calling big, you know, 27 big metropolitan cities across the United States have been kind of interrupted by the corona and then leveled by Antifa. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, but they blamed it. See, they did this as brilliant. They locked everybody up. Well, not everybody, but they locked enough people up for two months to drive enough of them to the point of joining Antifa without even being aware that they that's what they were doing. Well. No, no, no. Once you get into a mindset of you're anti and you're going to go out and be in a group, big group and protest and you hear a window break, boom, the little monster inside you is awakened and it goes, hey. I see mischief. I'm going to go get into some trouble. And that's the nature of the person that's been locked up and fucked with for most of their life. Ah, the programming is strong. Well, then tell me what the difference between where you're at, where I'm at is, when there's no violence here. So, hmm. Mm, there's no violence here either. Okay. I, you know, I said years ago yeah. that that there was going to be a collapse and that it would be in the big cities and that most of us out here in the boonies wouldn't even notice it. You're going to when the months come down the road, but not right away. Um. Okay, we might notice it, but are we really going to go? Damn, this sucks. Or are we going to go? Eh, well, we'll deal. I would assume it would depend on what you need to get from society to sustain your life. Mm. So if it's a matter of, you know, food, well, you're a farmer. You kind of have some of that food problem solved. But what about yep. when, when it comes to the electricity? What are you going to do when the system decides to double the rates? Because look at all, all the shit that these protesters did. An average Joe doesn't know his ass from his elbow, and he's going to believe, yeah, look what the protesters did. See, they, nobody checks anything. They just take the word of the news. And the next thing you know, they double the price of fuel overnight. Happened before, happened after that, and after that, and after that. Well, that's because history is really good at repeating itself. Why? Doesn't anybody get it? <laughs> It's like, no. what do you need? To, you know, even a dog knows if, if you yell at it when it does a certain thing, that if it does that thing, it's going to get yelled at. It doesn't want to be yelled at. It wants to be petted and, and happy. <laughs> so you yell at the dog and it stops. And it, and it won't do that certain thing. Human beings, wow, we're such a crazy animal. When you tell us no, guess what we do? We do it. Then guess what happens when you get a whole big group of people together and you tell them no? Um, well, it's, you know, reverse psychology kind of thing. There are times when reverse psychology works and times when it does not. And when you tell someone, no, don't burn it down. Here, let's put some bricks and some combustible shit right handy for you. No, don't burn it down. Right. Yeah. Too coincidental. People are being isn't it? played. Oh, when did you notice that? Uh, what year? Ha, 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 ha. Well, see, in the beginning of all this corona crap, I wasn't, I don't know, what's right? I was tiptoeing around it. I didn't write, come right up the first day and say, fuck this. But it took me about a week to finally crack and go, nah, I've seen this so many times because I wanted it to be real. I, you know, for a minute, I did. I wanted there to be something, but that wasn't bullshit in this life. But guess what? What? <laughs> you got a better chance of getting uh, impregnated by a team of aliens before you're going to get the corona and die. Okay? That's what. I couldn't find a nice way to put that. Uh, sorry, Wayne. <laughs> well, but, you know, um, seeing as how I do live out here in the boonies... And they do tend to like to pick on people that live out in the boonies. Uh, maybe my odds are pretty good for that. Then mm. they're alien people things. And you know. What would you do if the aliens abducted you anyway? <coughs> what would I do if the aliens abducted me? Yeah. 
Ooh, take the cough. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I swallowed my coffee wrong. And oh, <laughs> I know. And I'm the smoker, too. Go figure out. When I'm not coughing, why Miss Mary backs me up. <laughs> Excuse me. That's all right. Damn I can stall until you feel better, dear. Okay, ah. so if aliens were to abduct, abduct me, I'd say, yeah. okay, let's go for a joyride around the galaxy. I want to check some shit out up close and personal. And that way I can avoid a lot of the crap that's going on right now. Mm. Although if I have to come back, you know, like you guys have this kind of transportation system where I come back like two minutes mm. after I left. Yeah. That sucks. Sorry. Uh, uh, no. You know what? I'm, try- I'm looking for a way to thumb a ride and miss out on a lot of this bullshit. Yeah, but what cracks me up the most about all this is they can't. They can't seem to do anything right on Earth. Every every step they've taken, they call it moving forward, ends up screwing everybody up, right? But yet they want mm-hmm. us to believe that they've got space exploration under control. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. I saw 10 firefighters take 20 minutes to put a fire in a car out last night. So, mm. no, I, I don't think they got their shit together. I really don't. At least if they do, whatever's going on down here is a big performance, and we're being lied to about everything. Oh, yeah. What? See, I think outer space is anything outside of your body, so you know, How, space yeah, is yeah, yeah, outer yeah. of me. How do you survive? See, these things that they, they talk about, on the, we're all like, oh, yeah, we went to the moon, but, well, we, we lost the technology to return. <laughs> NASA. Yeah. yeah. Heard it with my own ears like 12 or 13 times because I liked the video. Yeah. Kept going we back to it. We lost it. And we just can't recreate it. We don't know how. <laughs> Although we're more advanced now than we were then. Right. But even back then, mm-hmm. the president could talk to them on the phone. In real time. In real time. On the moon. And yet your cell phone communication is somewhat iffy when you get to certain parts of the USA. I can't get a signal. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, thanks, Mary. But, I mean, we've been through all the you know, advertisements. So they've got it log- locked in our heads somehow that some part of this is true. And I guess that's enough. You know, As At least they get the date right. Okay, so they didn't go to the moon, but, hey, they went somewhere that day. So we'll give them credit. Yes. Because they, they did didn't. go somewhere that day. They went to a sound studio. Oh. <laughs> who, was the, all, who was the guy that filmed that? Uh, they claimed it was on his deathbed, the guy that actually uh, filmed it. I think it was Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick, yeah. Go Q. Yeah. Or you say it with Q. Ooh. Well, Q. I'm poor white trash, baby, and I call him Kubrick. Ah. <sighs> there you go. Anyway, well, right. you know, it's it's like turmeric and turmeric. But the irony, tomato, yeah. tomato. The irony of the guy that made the film made a deathbed confession film about making a film. So yeah. in the long run, it's like, wow, who do you? You can't. I'm so lost. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who to believe. So I decided, <laughs> fuck them all. I ain't gonna believe nobody. I will only believe what I see. And if I take my glasses off, guess what I see? Uh, nothing. Pretty much. Or, mm. or you see blurs. Well, it's kind of hard. Yeah, it's like you can be 10 feet away from me and if I have my reading glasses on. Now, if I don't know you by your shape, I can't tell who you are. I uh, need to be a lot closer. Do you, know, do you know when taking your glasses off would be a good thing? Uh, when I'm awake, I'm, I'm, scro- <laughs> I'm scrolling on Twitter while you're talking, and all of a sudden the mayor of Chicago showed up on my Twitter feed, and it's like, whoa, that would be reason enough for me to <clears throat> want to make sure I'm not wearing any glasses and be far enough away I can't see that clearly. Because damn, she looks like an escapee from the Adams family. But isn't she a fine example of peace and understanding in your city? Yeah, and she's begging, begging Walmart and other large retailers to please don't leave our city. Uh, please don't go. 
What a performance. Although we will let them burn you down. Please don't go. Wow. What do yeah. you make of all this? I mean, there's so much. See, they do this to us every time. It can't ever be just something. It's got to be something every day for two weeks, and then they change it. <laughs> well, it's because they spin that wheel. Wow. You know, they they spin the wheel of, of Boogeyman every so – they you know, and their timetable keeps changing, and that's – <laughs> Excuse me. That's what gets me is hmm. is you know sometimes it's boogeyman of the month, sometimes it's boogeyman of the week, sometimes it's boogeyman of the day because they spin the wheel every day in order for us to constantly have something else, and then they just keep at those all week long. And it's like, dude, seriously, I'm tired of your boogeyman shit. Hmm. Well, I noticed a big slowdown on news on uh, YouTube. YouTube usually puts up all these links right away. You know, there's five hours ago, yesterday, you know, ten hours ago. Now it's everything's a day, five days last month. They're not they're not uh exposing me to any new information of America. No, oh, no. There's nothing new about anywhere about nothing. Everything right now is reruns of old shit. So hmm. Yeah. Where are we, Miss Mary? I, I believe we've been abducted by aliens, and we're being held against our will. We must fight back. <laughs> fight. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the sucker's move right there. Get engage the guy that's got the fucking expensive toys and fifty guys to back him up. You know, and you're gonna. I've got my thirty eight. No, you don't, stupid. <laughs> Okay. They got yeah. weapons you haven't even imagined yet. But they still can't yeah. put out a truck fire <laughs> in less than 20 minutes. It's, it's weird. Well, well, it does kind of depend how much fuel is in the gas tank, I would imagine. Uh, I was amazed on how strategically placed some of the trucks, the fire trucks, that, or maybe cop trucks, the like the what do you call them, SUVs? Oh, yeah. I wasn't sure if they were police or fire, but this one particular one, they're filming it for the news and all this shit, and I was just thinking about how strategically placed it was all alone on a street in New York City and not close enough to the buildings on that street to do anything as long as they keep it, you know, kind of semi under control. They're there, they're, you know, they're keeping it under, but they're not really working to put it out. They're more concerned about filming it for the news. Oh, yeah. Photo ops are, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. those are. These are some really calm, uh, organized responders. They always seem to know what they're doing when they're doing it. And I, I, I would assume if that was me, I'd be in a panic. Hey, where am I going? Oh, crying out loud. What's happening? Not these guys. Maybe the steroids give them a better perspective. <laughs> Focus. Focus, damn it. Focus. Well, if, if you know, if rumors are true, steroids shrink your winky. So, if that is indeed the case, and steroids, you know, they take the interest of your winky away from you, that's one less problem to have. When you're crime fighting. Oh, I thought they shriveled up the luggage. I didn't realize That's, they also made the winky smaller. Well, I don't see. I'm I'm inexperienced in the arts. Of, I don't know anybody that's taken steroids. So Sylvester and then Stallone. If I did. I don't think I'd go up to him and say, "Hey, can I grab your junk to see if you your no. prunes turned into raisins?" I mm, not no. even for a giggle. <laughs> no. No, Wade would probably not laugh at that. You you got a point. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> But it still would be funny as hell. Hey. Well, it would be interesting. But I was just thinking, you know, maybe that, that steroid as a side effect, that particular side effect, helps you stay angry. Because, hey, look, shrink my wiener, but I got arms like tree stumps. Well, while the yeah. rest of us want a wiener like a tree stump, and don't give a shit about the at least if the arms work a little bit, in case there's no girl around. <laughs> but maybe, maybe with those big arms, he whittled it down. Uh, whittle, got, by whittle, by got, whittle by whittle by whittle. I got Whoa. big arms. Uh, I'll show you big arms. Uh, good, 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 good. <laughs> I live. Come here and hold this. 
Anyway, you know, even okay, Popeye well, had a dark side. What can I tell you? But, wow. Hey, I'm going to, yeah, let us worship the porn actor. See, he does talking about the George dude, Pink's brother, George. Anyway, and I remember talking either to you or Robin Blair about, I think this is a performance, all of it, right down to the oh, murder. Yeah. I don't think there was a murder. I don't think. I don't think none. Of, I think this was a movie. They they played it out for the public to see it under certain cir- situations, circumstances, blah, blah, blah. and then they released them from captivity and said, "Well, you, it's over. You can go out and protest." What? Wait a minute. Two hours before the freaking protest, COVID was going to kill every fucking buddy, but now. Even in England. Oh, you can't be out in public associating with anyone, but, well, you can protest. I think maybe they stopped that, yeah. too. And if you wish to plan a protest, you may have a barbecue in your yard. Just be sure to put up signs saying, we're planning a protest. You know, and that way they'll you can get away with, you know, not the social distancing. And the masks, no, they're just a fire hazard because you get to – so close to try and smell the meat or whatever's cooking on the barbecue grill, and then the mask catches on fire, and then next thing you know, everybody's face is burned off, and we just can't have that shit. So you have to plan your protest properly. No I've... masks, no social distancing. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, it's going to blow up in their face eventually. Maybe not in my lifetime, <laughs> but some someday you'll see. <laughs> well, there's just there's just far too many sheep out there supporting this crap. No matter how you slice it, if you're a protester, in my opinion, and they're going to like me for my opinion, but my opinion is the protester is begging the government, please, Mr. Government, don't take the dick out of my ass. Just ah, promise me something. Instead of stopping them by begging and you giving them the credit that they need, to have cops come in and beat you in senseless. <laughs> See, I'm protesting the protesters. Oh, and I'm no. being a good little social individual. <laughs> I'm staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you think you're staying at home. And I'm, I, I'm sheltering in place. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I, I've been out almost every day when I go into town. I stop and have at least one beer, sometimes four. But I get out there... Oh. Well, it's daytime, you know. You can't really get all boozy in the afternoon and not end up in trauma. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have good luck with alcohol. But I do like my society. I want to help keep it going somehow, some way. So I contribute by going out and participating a little bit. And sometimes it encourages others, too. Yeah. People will see that, oh, hey, there's a bar up there, and then it's all, you know, a bunch of tables and shit, and then they, ah, where's the menu? And then next thing you know, there's four or five, six people sitting down to have a beer. So, you know, every little bit count, and these people are not afraid of each other, and, you know, no gloves, no masks, no social distancing. I don't, I don't even think they're talking about it anymore. They're so burnt out on this freaking corona crap. They're waiting for what the government's going to try to pull the next time. And that's the crowd I hang out in, the conspiracy nuts that think that it's all a performance. Well, I would sit back and eat some popcorn while watching all the bullshit, but I don't have any popcorn. Plus, And I'm not going to go buy any. Yeah, but you live in such a quiet place. Yeah. We're we're not really the people to report live experience about this, but... It's something to talk about, and it really has shaken everybody up quite a bit. And uh, not the people on the RLM or that. I mean, people in general. I mean, people here in this country are, because they're, they're affiliated with this freaking Antifa shit, too. So they correspond, and then they plan shit, and then they fuck it up more for everybody else with their stupid uh, protesting. And that's what protesting is for, to control the rest of the crowd. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and to me, a protest is like you get out there and you go, 
my army's bigger than yours. You know, it's yeah, almost yeah. that kind of mentality. It's the result. And then you have people that come along that are the strong arms hmm. of that my army's bigger than yours. And the strong arms don't give a shit who they mess with. God, I have seen more damn videos today, yeah. you know, just watched like little tidbits of it and gone, okay, fuck it. This is too much. I No, no. The stupidity has gone beyond what I can filter. But, you know, one of them was this gal that was talking all ghetto, and, and I'm, I'm not being... <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Not I know. trying to be derogatory, but yeah, that, to yeah. me, that's like the ebonics of the 21st century is she's talking all ghetto, and she's yelling at people who are standing outside of their business with firearms trying <laughs> to keep yeah. the rioters away yeah. and telling them... You ain't from America anyway, and Allah burn them down, and blah 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 blah. Wow. And just you wait. You think you can kill us because we don't? Because we want to come and loot your fake ass China shit? And I'm thinking, <laughs> woman, listen to yourself before you put this out there on the interwebs. Well, it will where it will be there forever. You know, listen to yourself. Because, oh, my God, we don't want your fake-ass shit that was made in China, and it won't last, and blah, 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 blah. And you're out there with your guns defending your fake-ass shit, and we'll show you we're going to come, and we're going to loot your store. Okay. Now, first, you don't want the fake-ass shit because it was made in China, and it's crap. And how dare they have guns to defend their property from <laughs> you coming to take it from them. And then you say you're going to come take it from them anyway. I was totally confused, and it was only like a 45-second video, and I, it was like I was mesmerized. You know, it put me in this trance of, wow, <laughs> there's really people like that out there. Wow. <laughs> Holy carp. Dude. You know, you, you got people like that, and then you got these people out there that are totally wigging out because they saw a MAGA hat. It's a fucking hat. I've seen hats with worse stuff on it than that. Jeez, oh, Pete, people. Mm. I, I think I've been inundated today with, with stupid. Because, you know, Zappa was right. Hydrogen <laughs> is not the most plentiful element in the universe. Stupidity is. And obviously it's on display today. Mm. So. Mm. Right, but it, yeah. in all fairness, to the idiots out there that do these ignorant things. They don't know they're doing anything ignorant because their indoctrination and training and their superiority lies in their victimhood. And victims, as we all know, they get the American Express card to fuck everything up that they touch through life and blame it on you because their ancestors were mishandled as children and stuff, you know. But. And yes, and it is a trauma that has come down through the generations. Yeah, I get it. But it's a, um, it's a bullshit story that never fucking happened. But like all the rest of our you know collective history that we learned from one country you know to ten thousand miles away to another country, they tell you the right day in the right country. Maybe a few names are right, but the story is not true. Oh no, no. But you have well, to travel. Have, no, none of my ancestors owned slaves. Okay, but you have to travel to these places that I speak of, where shit happened, to actually see with your own two eyes that nah, that's not true. And I, I'll, I'll give you the most stupid example of what I'm talking about, but it'll make the point, right? Okay. And it's stupid because it involves um, Keith Richard and uh, the bitch uh, Mick Jagger. Oh. And in the in the train station and in the tubes in London, there's this plaque on the freaking property that said this is where Mick and Keith met to make it some big fucking popular spot. And it's not it's uh -huh. not, not even true. Yeah. That was Brian Jones's band. Brian's the one that brought everybody together. Mick met Keith through him. So history has been changed. See what I mean? Just these little things. They've knighted Jagger since. Keith is still playing guitar in Connecticut or something. 
Keith, Keith will be alive along with the cockroaches long after all of this debacle is done. That's right. Don't you forget it. And he will be the king of cockroaches. He's always you know the something king. that that occurred to me yesterday, or mm. it popped into my head. Mm. You know how all of this, because these people that are taking a knee and washing black people's feet, and you know, I saw a picture earlier today of some gal walking around with this big staff, and she had a leash, and she had all of these like six people walking behind her, white people, mind you who had T-shirts on that said, I'm sorry. Yes, you are sorry, but <laughs> it's not the way you mean it. Um, <clears throat> in any case, and they were they were her slaves. And I got to thinking about this with all of these people that are demanding that because of an immutable trait, I owe them an apology. And I thought, where in the hell was this seed planted? How the hell... Did this seed get into the human consciousness? And I realized it. It's the whole original sin nonsense that we have been, or at least those that have been brought up in the Christianity. Oh, or, yeah. You know, or <clears throat> or even, you know, the... The, uh, I guess the Talmud even talks about original sin. I don't. I don't know for sure. I've never read it. Not sure either. I have. I have read the Bible once. Rob. Once. Rob's kind of uh, familiar with religion from his childhood. Because when we play trivia, as, he knows a lot of that stuff. Oh yeah. Maybe he knows. Well, see, as far as I'm concerned, once they planted that seed of original sin that you are born with, a mark on you. Born with it, because somebody, eons ago, picked a fruit off a tree. So, number one, and this also, this also, you know, I think was the little seed that started the whole feudalism stuff and the lords and the masters and that kind of shit, which they call God the Lord. Yeah. Uh, word play, be careful of this, people. <laughs> but <clears throat> Eve, yes, the female, so definitely despise the female, picked a fruit from a tree and then took a bite of it. How dare she? She stole from her lord and master. How dare she do such a thing? And then and she did it. <laughs> she and then she bit it, and then she enticed the male to also have a bite of it. So the female is the ultimate evil, according to this whole story. And because of the damn, female doing this, and because Ow. she is the one that is having the children, <laughs> she passes on this mitochondrial trait of original sin. And so when people get raised with this whole original, you're born with original sin. So obviously, when you're born with a certain skin color, that means your skin color means that you have sinned against somebody because that's your original sin. You were born with it. And that's that popped into my head yesterday, and I thought, good God, it's no damn wonder people are sitting there going, I am sorry. They had no freaking clue. They've never met this person before in their whole entire freaking life, and yet they're going up, they're kneeling down, they're bowing down, <laughs> and they're saying, I'm sorry, I sinned against you. Let me wash your feet and kiss them. Oh, I have geez. never seen so damn many people with a foot fetish in my whole freaking life. Do you have any Crazy. idea how much money George Soros has? I don't care. Okay, well, I'm trying to make a point here, but you're you're going to fight me. I'm going to talk over you then. Then, the point I'm trying to make, my dear, is people will do sick things for the right amount of money. And it's not really hard for something like this to be buried. You know, pay people to do it and do it in secrecy. Oh, but yeah. film it in public and... I, I'll bet if when the research comes through, every one of these fuckers was a crisis actor. Picking up a paycheck from Georgie Boy. So, oh, I'm sure. And then the peer pressure shit. Nah. You know, the one where the where the cop wouldn't kneel down and 
Why don't you pray with us? Why don't you kneel down uh, and you? pray with us? And You're he was like, no, I don't need to kneel down to pray. <laughs> take a knee, take a knee. And the whole crowd is yelling, which is neuro-linguistic programming, trying to force him into doing something that he would not normally do. And he didn't do it. But how much of, yeah, how much of this is paid provocateurs? And so to me, it's like y'all are a bunch of shit. That's just that's all there is to it. I don't want to. I don't want to be around any of those people. No, any neither. of them. No. What should have seen my wife's face when she saw that. She's showing me. I didn't see it first. She did. She saw one of this girl being stopped at random. Ha ha ha. Now what mm-hmm. Cirque saw was the girl was uh, scared and complied, and I saw uh-huh. an actress picking up a paycheck. For, you know, five minutes worth of work. But I and always see what I saw you know, was a sucker because, eh. or at least the one that I saw, she was already wearing a mask walking around outside. Wow! See if you can and produce then, a play. Then this young man comes up and says, "I'm employed by Black Lives Matter, and my CEO told me to tell you that you needed to kneel down and say you're sorry." Yeah, it, nobody gets violent and fucks back. No, nah, this is performance art, baby. You're just being played. Well, it's like usual. No, I don't buy it. No. Nah. Especially with the crowd that I associate with on the RLM and all these gun lovers that you, you ain't going to walk on me, motherfuckers. But everybody I see on the Internet is bowing down and doing what they're told, and it just reeks too much of, you know, I known people in America that no, nah, you don't talk to them like that. <laughs> They'll knock you down right where you're standing. So these people are all gone. Where'd they all go? They somehow always manage to never put those fucking people on the internet. They never get filmed doing anything. So hmm, maybe the whole thing is just a big performance, like a fucking movie set, and they throw a little of the reality in there just to keep us confused. Because running like a clock. It is a movie set, but that movie set is is instigating peer pressure. And I I tell you what, after the last few days, I have a funny feeling my son-in-law would be one of those that would kneel down. And, oh, my God. And I just want to drop kick him because it's like, dude, seriously, do you not realize what you're teaching your children? No, I guess they don't. But... Uh-oh, does asking how do you un-iggy people on the uh, chat room? You type... I have no idea. Uh, you type in backslash ignore and then space and then the name of the person that you iggy and it'll read on the screen. You un them. They're back in your reading area. You'll see their text come up soon. Because I, I do that with people. Some people, and for a while, I can't take what they write. So I iggy them. So I don't have to read it. Can't get mad if you don't see it, because that's the kind of Jew I am, baby. I said Jew, not nigger. Yeah. Okay, well, I didn't say nigger. I said I'm a Jew. I'm being funny here. You're not laughing. Are are you racially embarrassed? Are you embarrassed by racial jokes? No, I'm reading the chat. Oh, okay. And I'm thinking, you know, instead of ignoring people on the chat, I just ignore the chat. I yeah. just go elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, funny. And yeah. you know, it's really easy anymore because I get a lot of chores done in the yeah. morning, yeah. and then, yeah. then by afternoon, I'm like, okay, I'm done, and I have to have some recliner time and and a little heating pad. Yeah, well, with so, the, with the time zones, you know, differences. I miss a good part of your evening time, so I'm limited unless I wanted to shift my schedule around, but I don't. I like it the way it is. Well, and mm. yeah, by evening time, because RLM has a tendency to to boot me out here. I know. I don't know if it's because of the weather or what, but I get booted a lot. I, so. I see a lot of folk on the page get booted occasionally. Not a lot, but I've seen a lot of that happen. You know, where three people are just gone, it says quit something, blah, 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 blah. But it'll be three names all together, and I thought, hmm, I wonder if that's something wrong with the computer system. Wow, weird. But well, not my and area. it could just be my internet because my internet kind of sucks ass. So yeah, that's Kate. That's what I said when you when you got them on ignore. All you do is you type um, 
space or type that backslash and then ignore again and it reverses it. Oh, Rob Works said forward slash. Oh, it's a forward. Yeah, it's the one where my number key is. Ah, see, I'm dyslexic. Yeah, this, see, it's I the same one. I don't know. I don't ever. Uh, it's I the don't same one over yet. your seven. But my, I got one on my keyboard on the um, number pad. It's above the eight. Yeah, forward backslash. Ah, fuck. I'm, I'm not a mathematician here, people. <laughs> I'm a retired uh, comedian from L.A. Hey, is your name Bill Nye? No. Oh, no. He's from he's Absolutely. from Washington State. Wow. Bill Nye, the science guy, right? Yeah, he's a washed you know, out comedian. He's a actually, performer, actually, right? Actually, he was there with Boeing, I think, in yeah, Seattle. Yeah, yeah. And he was trying to do the, mm-hmm. the late night comedy circuit mm-hmm. and totally sucked at it. And then he got offered this gig yeah. as being the science, science guy. guy. And, yeah. 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 It, but <laughs> isn't that strange that if you're given a title and – a TV show, people don't question you, your, uh, what do you call them, credentials. What did you ever yeah. do to get where you are? They don't do that. They just throw somebody in the mainstream and say their name a thousand times a day for a week. And then by the end of the week, everybody knows who that guy is. And then you tell them what he does. And they go, oh, oh yeah, Bill, yeah, Bill Gates, the computer guy. Yeah. What? Yeah. Who the fuck was, who? I, I bet if we... If we really did a little looking into the internet world. You find Bill Gates is uh, related to somebody very important. Don't tell anybody I said that. Okay, I won't. We could get, you know, checked out for it. It's not a good popular mm. thing to say. Mm. Be very, very quiet. Uh, because <laughs> the man is out there. You know what? They're talking about all this crazy stuff about defunding the po- uh, the police, right? Not uh-huh. not fire. Ah, see, I've learned enough about Admiralty Court in my life to go, hmm, defunding. Why not just disbanding or firing? Something sounds good, you know, final. And I went, hmm. Well, it's because they're an all or nothing mentality. It's either you have to fund them, you have to fund them, or you have to defund them. And my thoughts are fire all the bad ones. Fire all the son of a bitches that have skated. Fire all the ones that the that the police union has fought to keep them on the force, even though they're total douchewads. Because there are some decent guys out there that are and females that are wear the badge. I know a few decent ones. You know. Oh, it's not a matter probably, of that. Well, yeah, it's it's, and I think a lot of it is the hiring criteria. Of different areas, because out here the hiring criteria is don't hire a dick. Because if no. you hire a dick, you're going to have lots of people show up at the city council meetings, and you don't want that shit. You don't want anybody showing up so you can pass all kinds of other stuff. So they make sure they don't hire dicks. I okay, I get with that. You. Eh, nah, I don't buy it. I think it's just too many people uh, have too many rules, so they get conned into believing you need people to protect you. And if there wasn't anybody to protect you except you, well, like it is where I live, well, you tend to be a little nicer to people. You want an example? Yeah. I just like yourself, but I'm just I'm somewhere far, far away in this backwoods, fucking, uh, you know, inbred Danish freaking world and all that crap. But when I went to this town today, Cirque had some work, so I'm going to go have a beer and go to the grocery. I get, hadn't even got to the train station. One neighbor down the road is stopped talking to the guy across the road from you know, where he stopped down the road. And I know both of them, so it's a big wave a thon. You know, people are so familiar with me, whether they like me or not, they're civilized. And they see me, they say, hey. You know, it doesn't mean that we have, to, uh, we're going to have dinner together. It's just like acknowledging. The other guy's humanity here, when you know them, is just decent. It's just how you behave. Hmm. You know, and it goes beyond uh, friendships and all that loyalties kind of crap. This is just walking from one place to the other in this small area. People just tend to be more sociable with each other. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like out here. I mean, people just tend to be more sociable. Yeah. So you can't make it from one side of town to the other walking without saying hi to five or ten people. 
It's just, True. yeah. And, but I've been, uh, from the big city all my life to get to this. And especially with all the shit that's going on back home and then in England. God, if I hadn't left Scotland, there would be no way for me to get out of Scotland right now. I wouldn't have it had anywhere in the world to go. Isn't that strange? Yeah. And, and remember when we were on uh, World Truth and people were accusing me of running away from America? <laughs> and there was nothing to run away from in those days. But, wow, there is now. Yeah. Not for us. Yeah, you know, the small city dweller, uh, it's big cities that are burning. And I think Larry's close to independence. But outside of that, I don't know anybody on on the room that I talk to that's in you know embedded in a big city. We're all either suburbs or small towns. The RLM crowd. Well, I've been to the big city. Mm-hmm. I've I actually lived in Colorado Springs for a while. Mm-hmm. Not very long, but I did live in the Springs for a while. But, yeah, it's just, eh, I don't, nah, there's too damn many people. Well, how can this, all this problem that the world has become, a big problem, a festering boil, you know, and everything's bleak and everything's bad and blah, 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 fucking blah. And they're, tr- they're telling the truth about that part, but they're not telling the truth about the cause of it. And I think that the cause of it is the supply of the food and the water and the uh, energy sources. They're all bad for us. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, uh, you know, Java got his, he got a year ago, he got his knee replaced. I, I hope he doesn't mind us jabbering about him. But we'll use the name, the infamous Java Doctor. And uh, he got, yes. it, got a knee replaced and it went south on him. The guy didn't do a good job and he suffered but finally hooked up with a doctor that wasn't out to screw him over that did it right repaired the original replacement so now java's walking around on one leg better and he's guess he's prepping up for that second one coming up and now he's got a good surgeon so he's not gonna suffer like he did the first time but the reason on top of bringing that congratulations to Java is you are an expert on hospitals. <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, I don't know anybody that's been in a hospital in the last three months more often than you have. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I value your medical opinion because of, for one, your love for the natural remedies. That tickles me to shit. But the other thing is that you have hands on living experience with these entities and you're in good shape for somebody that just got in a head on collision and you know, yeah. your mom is just doing a lot better from what you're saying before the show. So yeah, yeah you're hmm, wow. Okay. So with all this coronavirus crap, okay. How did you, your experience with all the hospital trips that you've been making the last couple of months, how do you evaluate that? Actually, the last one, uh, when I went in for my last set of x-rays, I was just so damn tickled, and I was really ready to come and and announce in the RLM chat that I did not see a single person wearing a mask until. Now, this one gal was, you know, she was like, um, she was in a hurry. She was in scrubs. She had the mask on, and she was heading towards the maternity ward, and I thought, okay. Somebody's having a baby. So I understood that mask. Well, then I saw someone else dressed in office clothes wearing a mask, and I went, okay, never mind. Because, like, the first ten minutes I was in there, I did not see a mask on anybody in administration, any of the nurses, any of the lab techs, any of that stuff. And it wasn't until I got in to get my x-rays taken, and then the gal that that does my x-rays, Um, She was wearing a mask, but I'm sure that's hospital procedure, blah, blah, blah. You have to wear a mask. But, you know, when I come in there and she was getting ready to do it, she pulled the mask down so that we could talk easier. (laughs) Wow. But, you know, I was really, really impressed. 
because a month prior to that, everybody had a freaking mask on. Everybody. And at the administration area where you have to go and get your paperwork so you can take it back to the lab to get your x-rays, yada, yada, blah, blah. All of them had their masks on, and they had these sliding glass things that were locked. And there was just this little little tray that you could slide your paperwork underneath. And you weren't supposed to use their pen. You had to bring your own pen. And, I mean, it was freaking madness. But the last, the last trip was actually, you know, pretty cool until, you know, the last. And then it was like, ah, shit. I was ready to brag, and this is what's going on. Damn it. Damn it. But, uh, yeah, it's. And, you know, with my mom's thing, um, they've been letting uh, the siblings go in and visit her and stuff. And then yesterday they said, oh, nope, only one visitor per day, per patient. And it's like, what? When did you start doing that? Well, apparently there was a COVID case showed up in the town where she's at. And so that's how they're doing it. And when she gets moved to her long-term care to finish her recuperating, um, which is she'll only be there for a couple of weeks, but still, um, when she gets moved there, she will not be allowed to have any visitors come into her room. But you can schedule to have visiting time on the patio. So it's like, uh, one case, and all of a sudden, everybody goes batshit crazy again. So I don't know. It's a lot. I have a sister that believes you need to wear that damn mask. <laughs> and then the rest of my siblings are all like, are you kidding me? Now, my oldest brother wears one, but that's just when he's outside mowing. Wow. It's the only time he wears one because all the pollen and crap messes with him. Oh, well, that's... But, yeah, the <clears throat> mask will stop the pollen. Purpose, yeah. Yeah. But that's the only time he wears that's one. That's different. You know, yes. When you want to do something, <clears throat> that's one thing. It's when you're, you're tricked into it or bullied into it, then that's not the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I think it's kind of like across the spectrum. Mm. You know, I'm just getting a small glimpse of what's going on well, nationwide. Well, are the results... Okay, but I'm just talking about you because you had it head on. Your mom went to the hospital. I mean, all went the last few months. So, you've got... Yeah. You've got modern, while everybody else is being told the hospitals are packed full of dead people and you can't get in because there's so many corona victims and all this other story crap. And the truth is what? Uh, the truth is that's bullshit. The truth is that um, a lot of people are not going in for elective stuff because they're afraid. Or the hospital is saying, well, you know, we've cut out all of this elective stuff. So unless you have something life-threatening going on, you're not allowed in. Um, so it's – and some of the some of the asinine rules, you know, uh, especially with, you know, like uh, moms that are going into labor. The husband isn't even allowed in there anymore in some places. Even though the husband is, you know, garbed up and washed his hands with the antibacterial whatever, whatever, mm. and wearing a mask, they're mm. still not allowed in there. So, you know, it doesn't make shit bit of difference that you did all the Lamaze classes. You're not allowed in there now. Mm. And I think, what the hell is going on here? And then my brain went, okay, they are social distancing us. We are communal critters. Mm -hmm. We are social critters. Mm -hmm. And so the end of life, they are keeping you away from communing with your family. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of life, they're keeping you away from communing with your family. Wow. They're, it's a programming thing mm -hmm. is the way I see it. And not, not everybody's fallen for it, but there's enough of them fallen for it that I think it is going to have an effect. And there are going to be people that are going to have to be unlearned. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I would blame it on living in a nation of hypocrites. And that's not just the nation I'm in. I mean all of these fucking places. All of them. The people that run them are bullshit. Fucking, they're con men. They're playing. Oh, yeah. They don't even know what they're talking about. They're just making a paycheck. They read a sheet of paper. There you go. There's their job. 
to tell you what their bosses told them to tell you. Wow. You need to be elected to do that. You could get a fucking guy off the street and go, here, read this and film it. Well, see, <laughs> this is yeah. the result of wow. um, the education, National Education Department and teaching you what to think, not how to think. Mm. You know, they've done this for a couple of generations now of school kids. And so we are starting to have a society that does not know how to think. They just know what to think because of what they were told when they went through the public education system. Thank you. I don't know. Farmer's back. Well, I'm watching this epic saga of a tale gone by. It's called Bonnie and Clyde, right? Mm -hmm. So fractional reserve banking gets pushed in in 1913. And these thieves have been robbing the United States ever since they got their fucking mitts on it. And in the 20s, people were poor, like like now, only there was a lot less of them. So they made bank robbers out of some of the desperate ones. Yeah. There you go. Well, Dillinger was a guy that was, they said he went in there to the bank and burnt the bank notes that to uh, title deeds. So there was no no title deed at all. Nothing. Had to oh, start that's all over probably again. Probably what really pissed them off. How dare you? How dare you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know that. Oh, God, F- I sound. I was channeling my inner Greta for those of you that didn't know. Yeah. How dare you? See all that uh, policing and special units and FBI and shit like that. That's just. Uh, that's just the government playing with us. You know, because it doesn't involve the population until they do something like, hey, let's make liquor illegal and see what happens. Hmm. Yeah. Well, first they have to make things so dire, so horrific Hmm. that people turn to liquor as opposed to Hmm. other natural things. Well, right. Yeah. They make those other natural things illegal. Yep. Or you shouldn't do, and then they make you turn to liquor because, yeah, life sucks and you need some kind of an escape. And then they say, oh, by the way, you can't have liquor either. And it's like, whoa, that's when people start going, wait the (laughs) half. No, (laughs) we ain't having this shit. But nobody does that. Okay, It's the weirdest fucking experience of mine is reading the record always tells you what happened. And if you read the record, the record is weird. Okay. Yeah. And it's hard to believe that people can say some of the things that have been on the record in our history, and they stand as the truth because, right, they're on the record, not because it's what yeah. happened. That's incidental, Clarice. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. well, here we are. We're, we're conned, you know. Spelling. <laughs> yes. I'm not as good with the spelling explanation as you are, but I am aware of it. And I know that English is truly dog Latin. It is not a language to be proud of being able to speak. It's just the only one I know how to speak. Yeah. But in my old age, I learned not to depend on English as a, a, a means of survival. Let's use that. Because uh, as a salesman, pitchman, sell my wares kind of guy all my life. So I could always make money. Money was never a problem. But the things in life that were a problem were like um, not telling people the truth about what I thought about them. (laughs) Ooh, boy. So, yeah. Well, and the the way that I got to be that way is because everything around me was so obviously bullshit. Yeah. You know, my my yeah. parents didn't raise a child that would, you know, get told, okay, we're going to go to the circus on Saturday, and then Saturday would come and it would get put off. If my folks said something from, I'm throwing this at you, to you're going to the movies, it's going to happen. So there was none of that. I could trust the adults in my life to keep their word. 
There you go. Okay, well, it gave me a foundation to compare my personal existence compared to the society that around me and how they are and all the stories they tell and what they promise you compared to what you get. And I wasn't very old before I figured it out and went, wow, these fuckers are trying to kill me. Well, and see, I learned a long time ago that what society wants and what individual wants individuals want are not necessarily the same thing and if you get someone away from society you know as in away from their clique or their crowd or whatever you want to call them Mm. and just sit and have a one-on-one with them you'd be surprised how many things you agree on yeah true Uh, well and then every once in a while my uh superior being in the sky that watches over my happy little ass throws me a bone in in that area of uh, communication, I get Hansel. So I, I, I save all my anger up from everybody else and just give it to one guy. And he don't even ah. read me. Yeah, he got me. I got he, 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 me. I'm so pleased. <sighs> I got the most annoying guy in the world to Iggy me. I feel like Jesus. <laughs> it's like, wow, this guy makes me look nice. And he iggied me. So who's got who? Hey, hey, hey. Who, who's tough here? Huh? Huh? You, wow. <laughs> ah, that's right. See, it's all perspective, Mary. You can, make, you can make the shittiest thing in your life look like a success if you tell the tale right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, okay. But the truth, in a sense of its own, it, some people are like, Larry has taught me the... Uh, the concept of vibration and resonance is way deeper than I was led to believe as I was growing up. Now I'm yeah. a grown man and people go, hey, blah, 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 blah. I do a little reading to see if they're not telling me a story. And lo and behold, they told me the truth. Wow. And I was doubting that. But see, I'm a doubting Thomas kind of suspicious, don't trust anybody kind of guy. But I don't tell you that. I just check you out. I go, oh, okay, you're all right. Or... What a fucking nut, what? I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Leave me alone, oh, I, man. No wonder masturbation is so fucking popular. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, because, hey, part of the internet world is people that like to be alone, but don't really want to be completely alone, just a little bit alone. Yeah. Cause I, I yeah, like, they, yeah, actually, they don't want someone in their face, but they still want to interact. Yeah, the interaction of the Internet is so clean, and it's just, wow, you can do whatever you want with it. So, But it, I think it took a little of the humanity out of it, because I get a little rough with my imaginary friend Hansel sometimes. And I, I make him call me very bad names. See how you are. All right. Big well, old meanie poo-poo well, head. It, it's just... It's ver- verbal disagreement is the same on the internet as a fist fight to some of these people. Because when you want to hit somebody, it's because I've got nothing left to say. I'm going to change your mind by knocking you out. <laughs> there, that's what we are. We're, you know, we're basically combative, argumentative. We're fueled insufficiently. We get just the worst fucking advice on how to survive. And Life couldn't be really as as good as it is. It, we couldn't be fueled any worse and still survive. We're running on the bare minimum right now. So the yeah. problems that we have interacting with each other, that's just a reflection of the fucking society you're from. Because you know? I'm from L.A. I'm not from where I'm at. I well, yeah. wish I would have been... This would have been such a, a more boring life, but would have been a lot more peaceful and quaint, you know, but I had the life I had, but adjusting to this sometimes is a little, (laughs) it's when you expect strife and you don't get it, it's like the dog that didn't get his, his, Hey, you didn't kick me today. What's wrong? You don't like me. (laughs) One of those kind of deals. Uh, Circles. Okay. It's a cycle. Yeah. And she was out the door. So I had to raise my voice. Should have moved the microphone and muted on. That's okay. I'm a bonehead today. But anyway, you know, two or three pipe loads. You never know what I'm going to come up with. But looking, I'm looking at the internet right now, right? So mm-hmm. 
I'm I'm not so much doing it uh, to learn anything at this point. Now it's just entertainment. But I, some I, of it, some, and see, I agree. It's it's a lot entertainment, but hmm. some of it is, you know, every every once in a while, I'll see something, I'll go, oh, I want to check that shit out, and apparently, I have decided in my short time of left of you know how many fucks I have to give mm-hmm. for a lot of this shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have decided that if what I'm learning is not entertaining as well. I tend to wander. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's how I... Okay. But how do I mean it? Nothing nothing new is... is outside of Larry and uh, Rob stuff, nothing new is really penetrating my uh, wheel. You know, I live... Uh, all right. This is the way I understand uh, how we operate through our brain. Our brain functions uh-huh. us, right? Well, I've been around for uh, quite a number of years, and there's a lot of things I do. I talked about this a few times so far. There are a lot of things I do on, uh, like reruns. You know, com- they're autopilot. You don't need mm-hmm. to be consciously aware of what you're doing because you've been doing it for 60 years. But yeah, you don't need to get cocky and think, "Hey, look at me! I can close my eyes and sleep while I'm driving to work." No, it don't work like that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Although uh, yeah. <laughs> I do remember. Do you remember uh, when those good time fun machines come out in the 70s? The vans that had the little bar in the back and the... Uh, they, no, they were like limousines or something, right? Well, they... What state? Of ours, I, I, might, I might not have been in that state. Or it might not have well, been a national... Well, no, they, they were a vehicle that I think GM... I think GMC put them out. What year? Um, oh, criminy. Mid-70s. Oh, crap. In the mid-70s, I... I was mid a, to late, mid to late seventies. Uh, nah. I was, I was still in high school. Yeah, I was at and Ford. Uh, at I Andy. remember because uh, mm. where I grew up, we had um, it. It was just changed from a college to a university, so it got a little bit bigger. And we had some, we had people coming over from like Nigeria to go to school. And this is not like a Nigerian prince joke or anything, but mm. one well, of the Nigerians that had come over to go to college there had gone to the dealership and purchased one of those good time fun machines. <laughs> and it had cruise control. And he was thinking, oh, cool, cruise control. So um, he starts driving down the highway and set the cruise control and got up out of the driver's seat and went in the back to the little mini fridge in the back and started mixing himself a drink. And then the van crashed. <laughs> He actually thought cruise control would yeah. like Auto drive pilot. his vehicle. Yeah, and you know so, and this was like when I was still in high school. So ever since then, I've kind of been one of those. Yeah, don't give me this autopilot shit. My uncle Tommy, he wants to have a vehicle that will drive itself, and I tell him, it's only as good as the programmer. Mm. Do you really trust the programmers? Mm. Me, <laughs> it depends. Well, I trust Grimm's program. Yeah. So that's a big step right there because I, I do a lot of. I worked for about seventeen years with GM, oh, yes. and I don't trust their programmers because mm. <laughs> I was the warranty clerk, and I got to see all of the recalls that came out. A lot of times, especially the last few years, the recalls came out before the vehicle even came out of the parking lot to be shipped out to the dealerships and yet they couldn't take it back into the the um um oh shit the factories to repair whatever was going on no it had to be delivered to the dealership and then the dealership could not sell it until they performed the recall on it but the dealership had to wait to get the parts from the factory in order to repair the vehicle so that they could sell it because it was broken when it left the factory Bam. so i do not trust autopilot wow. period uh, okay i got something i want to bring up and i want to use a minute of that time to go to the other room for a minute too but this, okay. remember that phony, remember the phony cop link? The guy was begging all the other cops to be all cool. And turned out he was not even a cop. Yes. Okay. Now, what I wanted you to stall with was 
what's going on with that shit, or if you remember any of it. Did anything come of it? Um, well, the observation deck did a video about it. Be right back. Uh, there's been there's been a few other things about it, but other than that, no, um, I haven't seen any more about that because, well, you know, that was okay. Let's put this controlled opposition out there, and then the controlled opposition got called out for being controlled opposition, and someone milking people for. So you should feel bad for me because I'm no longer working. Yeah, nobody else is working either, you son of a bitch. But and I really don't know whether whether he really was a son of a bitch or whether I don't I don't know. I have not done the actual research myself. I've just looked at other people's research on this. And quite frankly, I don't care. Well, you know it that's wasn't... not one of those things that I feel like Digging into, well, I'm more interested in archaeological sites that they, that refute what they say about um, humanity's evolution than um, <laughs> you know looking into that shit. I I want to look at stuff that is like tangible evidence that yeah, the story we've been told is bullshit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but you got to start somewhere. Jeez. Yeah. I I do think I personal opinion I do think that that guy was trying to make money. He made money. He made like a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Got to well, go fund I think that That's, was the intent. Right. That, well, you know? it's all part of every step that the public sees as a collective seems to set right into the next step. How perfect! Oh, yeah. Look, th- these government people. They they can't run a fruit stand, but they can run a disaster like a German train schedule. Well, you know, it's like Milton Friedman said. If the federal government was in charge of the Sahara Desert, <laughs> there would be a shortage of sand within like five years, uh, which is true. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I'm just amazed that this crap is still operating. And basically, well, less... I don't see it not being intact. I mean, it may be on a local level in a big city there, but on a global scale, the the shit storm hasn't caught up yet. The shit storm hasn't really started, but it, I mean, it has. It's just take. I don't know how they're hanging on right now. <laughs> you know, I'm. I really don't know if any shit storm will actually become a shit storm. Simply because people have become so jaded by what has been put out there on the interwebs that they don't trust anything anymore. And it's to the point where if the shitstorm actually did hit, like if it was an actual shitstorm, yeah. defecation making high-speed impact with the rotary oscillator <laughs> kind of thing, <laughs> if that really was to happen, yes. you would have people going nuts trying to prove it wrong and dying at their computer terminals as they were being slammed by giant meteor or whatever. And, you know, that's I mean, that's one way to go as well. I'd much rather go in my sleep but uh, or doing something else that, well, we won't go there. <laughs> well, I was surfing. I was surfing the YouTube things today a little bit, catching up on my riot. And, uh, whoa, what I saw today wasn't so much mm-hmm. the the violent side of it it was the protester side of it the sheep mm-hmm. that are out there and their masks and their marching and their signs and, and wow they don't even know what they're doing in my opinion i don't think they have a clue you can't ask somebody to give you the power that they don't have to give you <laughs> you're begging you're being an idiot yeah yeah. You, know, you might as well knock on my door and ask me for some fucking gold. Because you know what I don't have? Any fucking gold. <laughs> Sorry. Please, uh, and you can may st- we have some more? Yeah, you can stand there for the rest of your life, and I still ain't going to have any gold. But I know a guy that does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, uh. well, shortcuts in life. Some people believe in hard work. I believe in networking. You, you know, if you know... 
things. If you have a, a, a talent or two, life takes care of you. And you don't have to struggle and suffer through it like some kind of animal. That's... Ugh. And now, that's Rob Works is wanting to know a mm-hmm. Jew with no gold? What the hell? Mm-hmm. What? Well, that's because I, I live to break all the rules of everything that I'm, ah. uh, you know, connected to by blood or paper. So You are a contrarian, eh? I I think that's what it will be labeled as, if you yeah, pretty much. But I don't I, argue I against what I believe. I only argue against what I think is bullshit. And that's just about everything that anybody says. I think that's your Mexican blood. Because I have seen quite a few videos lately of them Mexicans stamp, stepping up and going, get your shit out of our neighborhood. Mm. You ain't coming here to loot. <laughs> Green. Mm. Oh, well, man. They're, they're funny. They really are funny. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Life's funny, yeah. but it's also got its, got its rough side. You know, because when I was a kid, there was the Mexican gang, the warlords, and there was the Jewish gang, you know, the landlords. <laughs> yeah. So, there you go. And who had all the money? See, because well, we've all been conned into this concept of ownership. And I think I could, I got a cure for a lot of life's little ailments, but people are so greedy they never agree to it. And one of them would be, you only owe it, own it if you're standing in it. <laughs> yeah. You can't pick it up and take it with you and still own it. Nah, it's not yours. There you go. Yeah. So if you're a guest in somebody else's home, it wouldn't ever occur to you that you're some pompous twat that could, you know, take a shit in the living room floor and wipe your butt in the trays. No, you'd be a civilized human being. But what we have now is a world filled with yodels that run around and on command because, you know, their bosses pay them to. They destroy shit and rile other people with mental disorders to gather in large groups and and do bad things to other people. Yeah, and then and then they say, "How dare you try and stop us? How dare you defend your stuff? That's just stuff. How come you're defending your stuff?" <laughs> See, you know, the whole problem. We're just going to come take your stuff. Then I would yeah. say, as a Jew, and your whole problem is ownership, and. <laughs> we have a cure for that. <laughs> it's called interest rates. <laughs> and if you'll just give me your signature on this document, <laughs> I'll give you a house <laughs> forever. <laughs> well, but yeah. see, but we're we're trained and raised to do all these competitions and cut the other guy's throat to get ahead and get all the marbles and be number one and all this bullshit. And it, and it's really just to me, maybe not to all you you know wealthy landlords out there uh, who are you know enjoying the blood of other people. I just can't couldn't do it. I don't got that kind of nut, Miss Mary. I guess I'm a coward. Mm. See, I are. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm still stuck on the marble thing. I yeah. I have not lost my marbles. <laughs> I put I put my marbles away very good. Mm-hmm. I put them away so good that I don't remember where I put them. But I have not lost them. They're just put away in a place that's even safe from me. <laughs> yeah, we and I was reading the chat right now and I'm gonna I'm gonna go along and it geez. I'm gonna join a side on, on an issue. And my issue is gonna be <clears throat> not so much the uh police brutality and the cops shooting people and all. Now, I'm going to go a step further and I'm going to say, fuck law enforcement. If you can't handle your own problems and you need to hire out, that's, see, you're hiring a a crook to come and take care of your dirt. (laughs) And in a sense, if you think it through, that's illegal. But it's okay (laughs) if you do it through the state. (laughs) So I'm well, against yeah, it. Yeah, they they are thugs for hire. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of them are. No, all but of them are. They, they law, get paid. Law now. enforcement nah. that has nothing to do with policing or peacekeeping. They are enforcing laws. Period. Well, I've seen some pretty disturbing video of cops breaking windows of cars. <laughs> that they're they're the cops. And they're breaking the windows. There wasn't any vandals doing it. Saw it with my own four eyes. So, yeah. uh, well, you know, agent provocateurs and all that. I think my people created that concept. If you want to know what I'm mean? <clears throat> Well, you know, that's that's a job security thing. Mm. We, we must have people needing us. Mm. And seeing as how we don't have anything better to do than try and stop little girls from selling lemonade, mm. let's let's stir up some hate and discontent so that we can say, see, you need us. And the recipe has got so many good ingredients like religion. <laughs> Boy, there's one for you. What were you were talking about, original sin and all that crap, but I'm thinking things like when you can convince a living human being that their existence that they're in right now has no value at all. It's all for later after the, you die. Yeah. Wait a minute. I think I'm breathing here. Wait a minute. If I prick my finger, do I not bleed? If I finger my prick, do I... N well, that's another story. We don't want to know about that. But the point still remains. These religious fanatics in the world have got the sheep, the majority of life, convinced that this life doesn't even matter, really. Yeah, this is just a, a stopping point between some imaginary thing to another. Well, all right, maybe maybe they're right. I don't really care about that. What I care about is the control that they do it when you're really young to nab you so that you don't know any different. You always thought that, so you believe it, of course. So I've always thought that, so you can't ever not believe what you think you believe, like me. I just wasn't open to that till I was old enough to go, what the fuck are you people talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you well, out of your I mind? I kind of like the concept of a belief is merely a thought that you've made a habit of thinking. Oh, I've gotten in so much trouble for mocking the Bible. And I'm not sure if I was even mocking it verbatim, but the concept was there. Yeah. And people would just fucking hate me for saying those horrible things. Oh, I've been called a heretic so damn many times for calling people out on it. That Okay. Now, as I was growing up, my argument to them would be, well, where's your proof? And their response would be, it's a faith-based situation. And that was... like science. Okay. <laughs> exactly like science, Miss Bill Gates is going to inoculate you soon, <laughs> lady. No, I'm, I don't. I don't think he'll get you. Uh, ah, but I did. I came up with a way to get a lot of people to go along with the inoculation, but you still got to trick them. And the way you trick them, and about fifty percent of them are going to tell you, "No, I don't want to do this." But you tell them, "You got to get on your knees and close your eyes, and you suck the magic stuff out of a secret tube," and they'll go, "Okay." <laughs> And the other well, half, my mind went somewhere else. And the other half will go, no fucking way, Jose! I ain't doing that. <laughs> Never mind. It was a joke. Ah, I was putting a joke on the uh, in a perfect world podcast. Uh, not a really good joke or anything. But, uh, I didn't yeah. grow up in a. Well. I didn't grow up in a Catholic orphanage. I didn't grow up in a Jewish synagogue. Google, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But, I did grow up learning from penguins for my first, well, not my first four years of school, but because I had kindergarten and there weren't any penguins at that school. But oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the religious guys. The, the next nervous. four years, I had to deal with penguins, and mm -hmm. let me tell you, I I learned to fear the penguin, especially if they had a ruler in their hand, which is probably why I don't have much use for rulers either. Mm -hmm. Although I do like yardsticks, but yeah. that's beside the point. Well, Tape measures are cool, too, because they're bendy. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, does your butt pucker when a nun passes by you to this very day? <laughs> no, I, I stay away from nunneries. And I, I try not to see nunners. 
There's although, hmm. you know, the, the ones out here they don't really dress like nunners anymore. Hmm. You can't tell who's a nunner and who's a. Oh, nunner. No, I didn't know that. I wouldn't know. I haven't been home for nine years. Coming up September. Eight. Nine years ago, I left America kicking and screaming. I don't want to do this. <laughs> And here I am. <laughs> so wow. Yeehaw. Oh man, I'm talking. This it has been a trip, and especially being where I'm at and knowing what I know about reality, and seeing the bullshit that the population around the world is buying as true, it's just it's laughable at the most. I well, see it. Can, there you go. I get all. Well, who do you think you are? Well, I can read. <laughs> uh, mm. So it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with who I think I am as much as what I choose to accept as believable. You there can't you choose that. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? Didn't we teach you what to think? Damn it. Anyway, where did all in that the public freedom education go? system? Yeah, but where did all the freedom go? I mean, it was there just a couple of minutes ago, and poof. You got coroned, and then you got rioted, and now you, what's coming up? You know, I have my I big vision. Uh, I I got horrible visions for America. Oh, it's not good. The big cities are going to be in very big troubles. Yep. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to try to migrate to the country. Mm. Oh boy, that's unfortunately. Work out. Yeah. They either have relied on public transportation, which is going to shit, or they ain't got sense enough to fuel up their car when they look at the fuel gauge and it's down below a quarter tank. It's like, you get out in the boonies and your car's below a quarter tank, you best be stopping to fuel. And I'm I'm serious. There are people that come through here, out here in the boonies, and there will be signs saying, next stop. Fuel, food, whatever. Uh-huh. And they run out of gas in between exits Still. on the highway because wow. their idiot light didn't come on wow. and tell them, you're out of gas. Well. Are you kidding me? And they've actually, you know, like when someone takes them to the gas station so that they can get a gas can and go and put at least enough to get them back to the gas station. They'll say, yeah, well, I saw that my fuel gauge was low, but my light didn't come on, so I figured I could still go for a while. Mm -hmm. Idiots. Well, Idiots. That's why they're called idiot lights, too, by the way. It doesn't sound very good when we talk about people like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's a sad – that's one of the things that you get to see out here when dealing with people from the city Mm -hmm. is they just – they don't realize a lot of this shit. You know, and I think the city, you know, they get trained that, oh, there's a gas station on every other corner, so I can just pull in. No, that don't work out here. You know, sometimes you got to go 30, 40 miles out in this neck of the woods to find a gas station. Man, that's why I kind of like being Jewish, because that that part of my upbringing taught me to value um, not so much money, but you need things to survive in life. Don't go without them. So what other people call prepping and all that happy ass shit, I don't call it prepping. I just call it being prepared. And you can prepare in your head. You don't have to do everything physical. Just think you do. And they go, well, there's no more beef. Well, it's not good for you anyway. Find something else. <laughs> there's alternatives to every everything that you like. There's something else. Just got to be willing to look. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not taught that. We're taught to demand what we like. And we're we're sold what we like because that's what we do. We're consumers. And it's, yeah. it's done so well, you don't even know it's being done. You think, oh, that, well, I'm not paying attention to that. Yeah, you are. I and see that. They can get. The sad thing is. Most consumers have no idea where what they're consuming comes from. Well, no idea. Uh, and that's intentional as well. Well, now there's not going to be anything to buy, nor any money to buy it with. I figure about three months. So, because uh, the government's already begging for like 
$2.3 trillion more on top of all the other two times. They've done this twice already, I think. Or they've yeah. done it once and they're going to do it twice. And I thought it was a third is coming up. So if I'm wrong, which sometimes I'm, I get a little excited with my ideas. <laughs> I think but, it is the third stimulus. Okay, and right there. You know what that is? That's an addiction, people. Three times in a year. <laughs> you're you're multi trillion debting yourself. I in, think it's three times in, in just a little over three months. Okay. That's yeah, that's no, truly sad. Anything. It's like you know, even on T V shows mm. where, you know, they take the paddles and go clear, mm. clear. You only see them do that like three, four times, and then they say, okay, it's dead. <laughs> Even a rooster takes a nap once in a while, you know? Yeah. Jeez. These, these bankers and politicians are, they're like, uh, they're like prostitutes on crack. The more they get, the more they want. They're never happy. They always want the, the next thing. They're after the next election. They just got in office. They're already working on their next campaign. Get the oh, next yeah. job. The, and the public falls for the stupidity year in and year out like a bunch of morons. Well, <clears throat> I'm not impressed. Security. I'm sorry, but the results of all of this crap is even uh, not see, not the little pocket I live in because it's not that stupid yet. But Copenhagen sucks. Oh, fuck. I'm so glad I don't have to go there. Yeah. And I like Copenhagen. I lived there for like eight months. It was such a cool place. And then one day I just woke up and and here we are all these years later. Like I had some kind of cosmic debris land in my head and tell me, Hey, hey Lou, this place is gonna suck. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait. All right. Now this is how I see my mind working when I think things. And I've got this new girlfriend that I just met. Oh, well, we've been together a few months here. And I'm going to tell her I don't want to live where you're from. And she's going to go, well, it was nice knowing you, boy. <laughs> See ya. But I did. And she said, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? I, would say I was never expecting her to do what she did. It was completely out of, unexpected. So. And, if, and yet it worked out to be a good thing for both of you. Exactly. But but pers on a personal freaking level, I would have never chosen to go back to... if I, Me and Cirque had not connected. I was going to Spain. <laughs> I had a plan and everything. But uh, <clears throat> now I'm, 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 a, uh, <laughs> I'm an American in Denmark. <laughs> yeah, but I think you've been in Denmark long enough. You don't, you're... Well, yeah, no, people, I'm sure. Our, they have a long memory. They go, oh, it's the American. Our history but, is so bad right now. It's, 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 no, it's not good. It looks really bad. People aren't even talking to me about it. They're not bringing it up. They don't, you know, they know how it makes me feel. So they're avoiding it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'd rather hear me bitch about the corona. They don't. Nobody's bringing up anything about the states. So wow, I'm, I kind of like that because it, it just upsets me deeply that my home is on fire. Yeah, <laughs> and over such a, a bullshit story, a performance by these actors, and then perpetuated by this fucking global media bullshit artist cocksuckers. And here we are with our little 50 people that catch our show and, you know, get entertained by our, our antics. But we don't try to tell them what to believe. <laughs> so, you know, the freedom to believe whatever you like is very rare. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Cause it's like we are the inclusive ones. We are the tolerant ones, so long as you go along with what we tell you to go along with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's the reality of it, but the compliant, the terrified, what else? What do you want? I mean, besides sheep, the sheep is such a shitty way to talk about people. It's not their fault that they're where they are. It's, it's the results of a lifetime of being told stuff that's not true. 
Yeah. And we're not yeah. all cut out to go, hey, I think you're full of shit. And, uh, and as living proof of that, because when I do tell people, hey, I think you're full of shit, guess who gets backed up? Mm. Every fucking time. The person <laughs> that's full of shit gets the support from people that I'm trying to, to explain, hey, you're being fucked by this person. And it never works. You can't warn anyone. They never, nah, you can't know that. Okay. But it doesn't make me stop trying, but it doesn't go very far. Yeah. You know, and, and then especially with my fantasy life that I've lived on the internet here because it could be bullshit but that's the that's the problem with us as beings now we've been through so much crap in life that it's hard to believe people when they tell you what really took place yeah <laughs> yeah and well, then what it's a lot easier to to disagree with someone that's calling out the lie you believe than it is to actually give up the lie I think it's more fun to fight than to uh, not fight <laughs> is it a, a value it, it on entertainment on the battle you know okay I don't know. do you choose there's, your there's the battle of words is somewhat fun but even that gets boring after because you know you can't you can't do battle with an idiot because eventually <laughs> They're going to uh, bring you, you down, down to their level, and then they're going to win with experience. <laughs> well, so. no, no. It's even better. Oh, I agree with that, but I'm, I'm going to add to it. And, and not only that, but you have your character like me that no matter what you say, I'm not really – I'm not giving it any value, so I'm right. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I'm wrong, if, if it's me, whoever I am. <laughs> so And here we are. We're all doing – the same exact thing. Instead of finding the uh, the balancing points where we can survive this shit, we're still you know running around show who's got the biggest dick and all this kind of crap. It, it's contest. It's not a it's not an even playing field with people that are trying to attain a goal. It's forty personalities trying to maintain power. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well. Yeah. 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 And it's addictive. I do. I said 40 because uh, 44. I'm sorry. I thought it was zero. But, you know, bots and bodies. And whatever the, whatever experience this uh, Internet thing is, it rivals an addiction to me. I've never been this incapable of not doing something. Yeah, I guess this does kind of give you the a view that that is like you can see all of this stuff going on, but there's not a damn thing you can do about it. So it does. I can. Mm. It almost, you know, it's almost like it works. Now, see, this just popped into my head. It's mm. like, you know, they tell us that we are just an insignificant speck in this vast universe kind mm. of thing. So yeah. you are just insignificant. You're only one of seven billion. You're only one of seven billion. Do you really matter? And then you stop and think, wait a minute, I am one of seven billion. What are the odds that I would show up and be me and all of these seven billion people? Holy crap. So, you know, and and so now they're pulling all of this other stuff where it's, oh, well, oh, well. And so they show you this stuff that you have absolutely no control over trying to make you small again. Hmm. But the reverse of that is that doesn't involve me. Aha. That does not directly affect me. Nope. And, but by reading it or somehow by being part of this life, it sucks people into the group where they'll, they'll follow through with physical action. Yeah. And I wouldn't join any of these freaking groups for Black Lives Matter. should be called Black Matter uh, Libs. <laughs> oh, there you go. <clears throat> I've been writing it, but it doesn't. it's hard to read it because lives has been used with it so much. Nobody knew I was making a, a joke out of it. I think I'm going to go back to practicing at the Church of the IDM and IDC. Mm -hmm. It don't matter, and mm -hmm. I don't care. 
Oh, uh, that's not so. I don't believe you. Well, you know, there's an awful lot of shit that's going on elsewhere that how do I know if that's really going on or if that's ah, just a stage performance? So you've got, well, you've got limits. And if it's not then. directly affecting me uh-huh. or if it does directly affect me and I can do something about that effect, then does that, that performance that's getting put on out there really matter? That's or is it just one yeah. of those things where it's like, yeah. hmm, okay, that's, moving along. That's Next. the whole point. You're not wired to accept it. Yeah. And Larry and I've, Rob. I've redone my circuiting. Right. But Larry and Rob have done a little talking about that, too. They're they're using micro on it, microwave on us, you know, with the Wi-Fi and all this other shit. Oh, one more. Yeah. I got a quick story. I go to, down on, to this little bar. It's got on the main street, and I can sit, and there's a little uh, ice cream parlor that reopened across the road. Uh-huh. And just yesterday, I'm sitting with a guy talking, and we're talking, and they have this sign in, in the window that says, we don't make Wi-Fi. You have to talk to each other. And I use that as a point in the conversation I was having with my buddy. And today, I go down there to have a beer before I go to the grocery store, and I'm sitting there. And this girl starts scrubbing the damn sign off the window. With a, you know, oh. cleaner with a razor blade. Razor bladed it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just the minute I sit down and look at my sign, there's this young 15, 16 year old girl scraping it off. Now, I get, she must probably think, oh, that old man sitting there staring at me all afternoon. I was just pissed off because she's scraping off all my favorite sign in the whole city. You know, and I sit there just to sit there and can glance at that just to make sure it's still there. And today it wasn't. But she was defacing the store. <laughs> in my opinion, and everybody else that you know needs Wi-Fi because they're all connected. No, they love that shit. Yeah, you, know, you can get free Wi-Fi, but you're gonna pay three bucks for a bottle of water. Yeah. Well, and why why have all of this Wi-Fi? Because apparently everybody's cell phone plan now has Wi-Fi in it. Oh, wait, data charges may be incurred. That has got to be the biggest boondoggle of them all. <laughs> data charges. Yeah, well, no, I think oil still beats information to this moment. And information well, is going to be, it's going to take over, but there's going to be so... Um, they got to get rid of the riffraff first to make this electronic crap actually profit. Because they're dealing in debt. There's Nobody's got any fucking thing that they own right now. Everybody's in debt. The whole thing. It's a big bullshit game. So they got to figure out a way to not let the public know that and still maintain their power. No, I think they ran out of stories, so they come up with this uh, violence and riots and shit to distract from the dollar crashing so they can get another re- replacement in there before the people wake up and go, holy fuck! And by the time they do, there'll be six companies to buy you shit from, so it won't matter. But Well, see, I think this is riot light. Yeah, this is the you beginning, know, this, phase this one. This is the precursor, because oh, yeah. when, sure. when the fiat currency does <laughs> crash... Oh, yeah. Then everybody will just go, oh, shit, it's just another riot. There's no, yeah. And then people will actually start siding with the looters because, yeah, well, it's a get-what-you-can-get kind of mentality because dollars don't work anymore. And from what I read earlier today, this whole debacle with this George Floyd started because he passed a counterfeit $20 bill. That's what I oh, read, how, too, but I was how, told no. How dare well, all the read it counterfeit was a check. their counterfeit money? No, I read it was a check. Okay, yeah, that's right. I was told that later. I got reversed in my head again. I was wrong. Well, there's, you know, there's just something really wrong with someone making fake currency what? instead of using their fake currency. Uh, but what and if, that's why he got taken out. Well, I don't think he got I think this whole thing's just one big performance. It's too well done. You know, it's well, uh, he's probably somewhere on a beach with um, Epstein. Yeah, yeah. It just reeks of all that bullshit that the police do when they do their bullshit. I mean, there's even videotapes of cops doing a little looting in New York. <laughs> it's like, wow. 
Yeah. I saw it with my own two eyes. I could not understand what the hell they could have been doing except breaking into the jewelry store <laughs> that they were breaking well, into. Well, and that's <sighs> because there's ass munches in every walk of life. Not to mention ins- just are. insurance and there, all these scams, layers upon layers upon layers. And there's no money. So I, it's just creative accounting. People are adding zeros to bank balances. <laughs> It's magic, yeah. Wow, and here we are with all this crap all over the place going on, and yet we're still the conspiracy nuts. <laughs> oh, and Dust said uh-huh. diamonds are valuable. Uh-huh. Yeah, diamonds are <laughs> valuable because the De Beers family pretty much has a corner on the market of val- of diamonds, and yeah. Well, it's not yeah. the diamond. It's the concept, because they did the same thing with tools, yeah. right? In the, because they're rare and they're precious. In the 1400s. And they're yeah. so shiny. All right, but no, it's not. It's, it's not, all bullshit. Right, but it's it, all bullshit. if wealthy people tomorrow decided that a certain color of rock was valuable, then it would be valuable, because they said so. Well, you know what? A few months back, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, everybody decided that toilet paper was valuable. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make damn bad difference how much money you had. You couldn't get your hands on toilet paper. Well, you know, Cirque's a trained artist, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, not so much. And we have this one major disagreement in the art world. And and it's really stupid. She, She likes the Mona Lisa. And I think the Mona Lisa looks like an ugly Italian guy in a dress. So I don't find the Mona Lisa an appealing piece of art. In all my life, people have kind of looked down their nose at me for saying that out loud. Go, whoa, yuck. But I like Starry Night (laughs) of Van Gogh. (laughs) So, you know, uh, matter of taste. You You can't explain to other people why you like something you just do or and if you sometimes you gotta lie tell them you like it when you don't to get along (laughs) me not so much i don't really i don't care i don't think it's important i tell her you know if you don't like something i like that doesn't fucking change nothing so what if you want to carry something like that that's the decision you make well you know that's like the farmer and I, mm-hmm. I mean, he does not like cottage cheese, and I like cottage cheese. And he tells me, well, go ahead and eat your cottage cheese. And I don't remember what it was. There was something that he really likes that I don't care for. And so he said, okay, fine, I'll eat your share. And you can eat my share of cottage cheese. Yeah. No big deal. Exactly. See how, how it works. partnerships are like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I saw something on Twitter earlier today. Some guy said, you know what? There is nothing in this world that's black that I don't like except black licorice. And I just had to tell them, that's fine. That's fine. You just send all your black licorice to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you and love I them, Mark. I will take one for the team, and I will consume it so you don't have to. And they like it sour, too. So there's the sour licorice market and the sweet licorice market. They make tea out of it here. You you could find licorice in just about anything. Liquor. They they got these mm-hmm. shots down at the pub. Well, uh, I'm still in England in my head sometimes. But, uh, wow, they taste just like licorice. So when, when I drink them, they're, it's like sweet. and Oh, man, you can go, hey, give me another one of those. No, don't. Is that Jaeger? <coughs> is that the, the one that tastes no, like licorice? No, no, This is a Danish. There's something no. over here that tastes like licorice that my kids tried to get oh. me. I, I'll oh, get the name. That says Uzo, but. No, no, no. I'll get, I, the, I'll get the name of it from the bar, and, and I'll, I'll report back next week with the proper name of this particular shot. But it's such a, it's seductive. It's dangerous to drink it because I'm very small, and I cannot drink a lot of alcohol. <laughs> but when it tastes good, I don't care <laughs> until well, the coma hits, and then I care. My daughter's tried to get me to do a Jaeger bomb. Ooh, oh, dirty girl! And they said, "Well, Mom, you like black licorice? Yeah, but that ain't black licorice. That's mm. nasty shit. That's nasty." So, mm. yeah. You know, 
we come up. We got like five left here on the clock for the uh, In a Perfect World podcast with Grand Z this week. You know, Grammy said that Leonardo did a self portrait in drag and named it Mona Lisa. That's what I <laughs> yeah, that's what I read. But uh, you know what's really strange? I'm gonna end the show with my my side of this. I've always been irritated as fuck that the only guy in the whole history in that period of time that did anything that was worth fucking noting was Leonardo. Everybody else, now fuck them. Wait, where'd they go? Huh? 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 And you know, that's why I like some of those, yeah, Anise. I've got some Anise. So, well, so the end, in any case. But, but the end of my thing is, it wasn't mm-hmm. one guy. It was a group, just like today, we have the Senate, blah, 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 blah. Well, just like then, there wasn't one Leonardo. There was probably a group of guys and gals that did all that work. It was <laughs> not one. I mean, history does this to us over and over and over and over. And see, I was I, with watching those videos of like the the uh, archaeological digs and that kind of stuff, and different <laughs> archaeological sites that that the accepted archaeological yeah, accepted, whatever please. they don't want you to see them they don't want you to go there but when watching some of those videos mm. they also showed different artwork and i can't remember who the artists were that did this but damn mm. the attention to detail is amazing. freaking amazing i mean they look like these people look like they could just walk right off the page and the, the materials and the materials yeah, that they how- used in the day they did them and the way they preserved it to this day, blah, 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 blah. And here we are. You know, people can't, can't, yeah. they can't read cursive anymore. I mean, oh, crying out loud. You know, somebody said if you just uh, had a uh, three speed automatic cars and cursive, we could wipe out this entire two generations behind us in a week. Well, you know, I did read somewhere that cursive is supposed to be the writing of a dead person, which I don't know. It's one of those, you know, conspiracy nut things, Still? which I'm not necessarily a conspiracy nut, but mm. I do know somebody's out there doing shit that they need to be called out for. <laughs> well, if you know what I mean. Right, but just like with measurements, you know, the, we, they've got the uh, metric over here, and I've got all uh-huh. those American standard measurements I grew up with. So the being able to, to do both really helps. Yeah. You know, so being able to read and write in cursive and printing does gives me a huge advantage. But yes. it's not a talent that's being passed on to the youngers. They're not learning it. So Well they're not even learning to print legibly anymore. I mean that's that's how sad this is because mm. You know, they if they ever do take the grid down, or if it just goes down because it's shit, mm-hmm. um, a lot of these people are going to be totally screwed because they have no way to communicate with the written language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, they can read books and stuff, but to actually write something themselves, they have no way to – I know a lot of people that they're printing, holy crap – I can read a doctor's signature better than I can read some people's printing. <laughs> they just they don't wow. focus on the dexterity it requires, hmm. which is also building synapses in the brain. But, oh, you've got all of those damn vaccines with all the adjuvants in them that are destroying the synapses in the brain. So it's no wonder kids can't write anymore. But uh, vicious circle, vicious circle. Uh, for another time. You're always We're almost welcome. Out of You're always welcome to jump in on my podcast when I'm going on. And I don't know, uh if you want to chop in and say hey to Larry and uh, Rob sometime, I don't think they'd be adverse to you making a little guest appearance and saying hey to Larry. I mean I think Larry I would just... I think Larry would welcome your dainty little voice for a few minutes. <laughs> Well, Larry and I do interact a little yeah. bit over on Fakey Book yeah. because he's got that – he's got his personal page and then he's got yeah. another yeah. page over there that's – Yeah, Limitless Energy Technologies. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because I'm a Larry promoter. I, I like Larry's work. 
Yeah, so I he am. puts a lot of cool stuff on there. So it's like, yeah. dude, oh. seriously. And we need somebody to tran to do some computer translating. Do you got any time in the future? You might want to um, donate to us. We'd like to talk to you. Ask Rob for details. If you're on Facebook and you got a little time to help him with the project, because me and Rob aren't on Facebook, but we need something oh. that they've got. So if you're interested, oh. talk to Rob Works about moving Larry's stuff to uh, another place from Facebook. That's what he's concerned. Oh, yeah. Oh, not translation, transferring. Yeah, okay. transferring okay. or, you know, some kind of yeah. technical. But talk to Larry about it, cause, and, or Rob about it, because Rob was the one that thought of it, and me and Larry don't know shit about computers. But it's not that big of a deal. It's just something to bring up to your attention. And that comes to the end, folks. Say goodnight, Miss Mary. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have an awesome rest of your day. Good night.